Song Wu has two options now. He can either use Devil's Door or the Beast Syringe. These are both items he has got as a loot after defeating some difficult foes, but both of these items come with their side effects. The Beast Syringe is an unidentifiable rank item which is crafted by a player. It will temporarily turn its user into a werewolf. It is an extract made by boiling a beast. After using it, the player will return to normal within 20 minutes. Song Wu is a bit hesitant to use it because it can cause some unknown side effects, but he has no other choice. On the other side, the Devil's Door is a special rank magic scroll. It will open a Devil's Door for 24 hours. The Devil Door creates a path to and from a Devil's Lair. Extremely rare items can be obtained by exploring the Devil's Lair, but it is not recommended to rush the Devil's Lair because the monsters can rush out of it as well, and the recommended level to clear it is 35. Songu is a bit hesitant because all of them can die if things go wrong. Devil's Lair is an item that the pirates were planning on using as a strategy to destroy a certain region in Korea. And Song Wu was originally planning on challenging it himself, but right now he has no other choice. Song Wu is thinking of transforming into a wolf first using the Werebeast syringe. Then he will turn around and open the Devil's Door behind them. After that, he will run away as the only thing he needs to do first is to survive. Song Wu tells this plan to Righty and the Death Knight, and he instructs Death Knight to guard the school. After that, Sung Woo starts heading downstairs with his minions. The way forward is blocked by the test subjects and his skeletons are barely holding them back. Righty and the Death Knight jump into the ranks of test subjects and they receive 100 gold for slaying each test subject. These test subjects are quite strong, but Sung Woo is only receiving 100 gold coins, which are nothing compared to their raw power. Sung Woo uses corpse explosion on the dead bodies of the mutants to kill them off in one go. Sung Woo is thinking that the snipers will not be able to see through this smoke. Sung Woo uses weakened spirit on the incoming wave of werebeasts. Their leader orders them from outside to not remove their masks as the gas released by Sung Woo can easily be repelled using them. While the werebeasts are busy with his minions, Sung Woo seizes this opportunity to use the beast syringe on himself. On the other side, Righty gets punched by a werebeast. The impact of the punch was quite strong so he crashes near Sung Woo. Sung Woo just used the beast syringe on himself. He starts feeling some changes in his body. All of a sudden, a lot of energy starts bursting out of him. But surprisingly, his lich form is not cancelled. His entire body feels like it's being ripped apart and his face feels like it's being crushed. A notification pops up which informs him that he has met some special conditions by combining his lich state with a werewolf state. A big ball of energy forms in the hallway and it starts pulling in the breath of Abyss from the area. The rare beasts are a bit confused as they don't know what is happening in front of them. After soaking in the gas, the core starts shattering. Sung Woo comes out of the core in his new state which shocks everyone present around him. It turns out Sung Woo has temporarily gained the power of Anubis, the god of death, and he is temporarily in a state of a demigod. All of his stats have increased by 10. He can now use three new master rank skills such as Soul Siphon, Demon Bombardment, and Twilight Attack. The Beastmen are a bit taken aback because Sung Woo just became a Beastman like them. A new notification pops up which informs the Beastmen that their stats have decreased by 2 because of an unknown energy. The morale of the Beastmen is hitting rock bottom, and they are all in a state of confusion. The Beastman leader orders his minions to attack the Necromancer as he thinks that Necromancer is using some petty tricks to get away from them. The Beastman rush towards Sung Woo but he disappears in an instant. In a few seconds, Sung Woo appears right behind them. He then chops up the Beastman using his scythe. Sung Woo is feeling completely different from before. It might be because he kept focusing on upgrading his skills and summons, but with the Anubis Lich state, it feels like he's not human anymore. Sung Woo absorbs the souls of the 11 werebeasts he just slayed. He then uses those souls to buff his minions, which increases their attack rate by 10%. With his newly acquired power, Sung Woo is feeling like a true god of death right now. The Beastman leader orders the snipers to shoot Sung Woo from the distance. All of them release their bolts in unison, but Sung Woo disappears once again even before the bolts hit him. Just like last time, Sung Woo uses the shadows of his enemies to teleport himself behind them. He then chops off a group of snipers using a single slash attack and he earns 21,000 gold for slaying each second rank rat beastman and he absorbs their souls as well. The other sniper beastmen found out his new location and they start preparing their crossbows. They shoot their bolts at him but Sung Woo vanishes into thin air. He appears behind the snipers and shreds them to tiny pieces. Other werebeasts try to surround him from all sides. The werebeast leader orders one of his snipers to ready the Saint Silver Arrow. 
the sniper gets ready to try out this new type of arrow. The results of the Saint Silver Arrow are quite amazing as it's a holy item and it manages to return three of Songwoo's minions into eternal death. The sniper becomes a bit happy as his divine arrows can damage Songwoo for real. Songwoo gets alerted as he now knows that the beastman prepared some divine weapons for him. But he has a divine weapon of his own and he imbues his scythe with demon bombardment. Demon Bombardment is a master rank skill and it costs 20 mana to use. It consumes souls and explodes them with a powerful curse. Sungwoo used the Demon Bombardment on the werebeasts around him. One by one, they are getting ripped into shreds. Even their divine shields cannot protect them. Sungwoo absorbs the souls of the newly defeated foes. He then uses Corpse Explosion on the dead bodies of werebeasts around him. Sungwoo has now accumulated a total of 34 souls and he's feeling quite awesome. After absorbing a lot of souls, Sungwoo imbues his scythe with demon bombardment once again. He then upgrades his skeleton minions using the souls he just gathered. The beastman leader orders his men to get away from Sungwoo. He will deal with the necromancer himself, so he orders his men to hold off his minions. After some time, both of them come face to face and the beastman leader says that Sungwoo just changed his fighting style. He is wondering if Sungwoo was one of their kin all along. But Sungwoo mocks him by saying that a wolf like him cannot be akin to a cow. The werebeast tells him that those concepts are old, and now all beastmen belong to the same species. Sungwoo asks him if he is one of the four werebeast leaders. The beastman leaders asks him about how he knows about the four leaders, and Sungwoo says that he just knows about minor details. Sungwoo imbues his Grim Reaper Scythe with Demon Bombardment. He then uses it on the Werebeast Leader. But the Werebeast Leader somehow managed to block the attack and he throws some chains towards Sungwoo. The chains envelop the Grim Reaper Scythe and Sungwoo gets a notification that his weapon has been sealed for a short period of time. This beastman is called the Red Rider and he prepares to finish off Sungwoo. Sungwoo has only 7 minutes of Grim Reaper's state remaining while his Werewolf state has 14 minutes left. His weapon is sealed but thankfully it didn't cancel his Grim Reaper's state. Red Rider tells Sungwoo to brace himself for a huge impact. Sungwoo is thinking that this guy is quite powerful and he cannot drag out this fight any longer. Red Rider can read Sungwoo's expression and he knows well that Sungwoo is getting impatient. Sungwoo compliments him for having an ability which tells the state of animals. Red Rider informs Sungwoo that he was a vet in his human years and it's a basic skill for a vet to read the expressions of animals. Sungwoo can easily capture him with his minions but they are currently busy with other beastmen. Sungwoo looks back but it seems like the beastmen are holding his minions back. Sungwoo asks him if he prepared this plan to engage him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Red Rider says that he is correct and he made this plan because Sungwoo normally fights cowardly. Red Rider mostly fights without weapons but this time, he is using equipment to get an equal playing field against the Necromancer. Sungwoo says that Red Rider is a coward as he's a fighter and he's trying to fight a mage-like character in the melee battle. Red Rider tells Sungwoo to shut up as he talks like a coward. Red Rider feigns a punch and he lands a kick on Sungwoo. Sungwoo felt the impact of the kick and he's getting a bit nervous. Red Rider uses another powerful attack on Sungwoo. Sungwoo got hit pretty badly this time and blood starts coming out of his mouth. Red Rider pulls him up to ask him what he is going to do next as all of his underhanded methods have been dealt with. Red Rider prepares a strong punch attack to get rid of Sungwoo, but this time, Sungwoo easily catches his punch with his bare hands. Sungwoo informs him that his time of playing around is over as he just got all the experience points he needed to put the Red Rider in his place. Sungwoo's strength stats alone is 52 and if you add the bonus stats acquired after becoming a beastman, then there is no need to be afraid of this Red Rider. Sungwoo breaks one of the hands of the Red Rider with a strong grip. He then does a follow-up punch barrage attack. Red Rider is in extreme pain but he can't block any of the attacks. Sungwoo kicks his face into the ground. Red Rider has not hit the dust yet as he got another trick up his sleeve. Red Rider pulls out another syringe. He injects himself with the syringe. In a few seconds, he starts brimming with power. At the same time, the Grim Reaper Scythe of Songwoo has been unsealed. Meanwhile, inside the building, the test subjects have been dealt with. The refugees are amazed as Ji Si Yun killed so many beastmen on her own. But there is a test subject hiding among the other dead bodies. He jumps out toward a refugee to kill him. Han Ho comes in between them and he blocks the attack of the test subjects with his invulnerable body. Han Ho then rips him apart using his bare hands. Ji Siyun says that the interior of the building has been cleared out and Han Ho comes back to his normal state. Ji Siyun goes toward the windows to check out the situation outside. 
The situation on the outside is not looking well as there is poisonous rain everywhere and the buildings around them are almost destroyed. Sungwoo is hiding from the Red Rider so Red Rider tells Sungwoo to fight him like a man. Plus he got his scythe back so it must be easy for him to deal with the Red Rider. Red Rider is the fourth ranked beastman and he's like Sungwoo who has gone through his first awakening. At last, the Red Rider finds the Necromancer and they start juking it out. They keep on attacking back and forth. Sungwoo is running out of time so he imbues his scythe with demon bombardment skill as he needs to get rid of this beastman as soon as possible. Red Rider jumps up to avoid the demon bombardment skill but he has already been poisoned and blood starts coming out of his mouth. Red Rider falls down to the ground. He starts shouting at the Necromancer as he is using some cowardly skills again. Sungwoo tells him to grin his teeth as his situation is about to get worse. Sungwoo uses Twilight Attack on the Red Rider. Twilight Attack is a master rank skill. It costs 40 mana and 20 souls. It uses the energy of the souls to move at a fast speed. It inflicts strong magic damage on enemies at the landing point and binds them with the ghost's hands for 10 seconds. Red Rider gets caught up in the Twilight Attack. Sungwoo activates ghost's hand skill on the Red Rider which completely binds him in place. The lackeys of the Red Riders are getting anxious as their leader just got trapped. Red Rider is in despair and he orders his lackeys to bomb this place. They can't afford to let the Necromancer live, but Sungwoo says that they are already too late for that. All of a sudden, a red portal appears near them. Another beastman with a cane comes out of the portal. This beastman is another fourth ranked beast and the others call him the White Cardinal. There is only one minute remaining until the Grim Reaper Scythe runs out of time. Sungwoo is thinking of running away but at the same time, the White Cardinal tells the Red Rider to run away. The White Cardinal starts coughing up blood and he keeps on telling the Red Rider to run away. All of a sudden, some bolts of yellow lightning pass by them. Other beastmen get confused after seeing the lightning above them. Sungwoo has an idea about what can be causing this lightning to emerge here. A notification pops up which tells everyone that an unknown energy is making their bodies intimidated and all of their stats have decreased by 5. Two yellow colored hands appear above them and they start ripping the space apart. Han Kang Sok appears out of the space and he tells Sung Woo that these bastards tried to stop him from meeting him. But this is expected as Sung Woo is the biggest star of Korean server and everyone wants to meet him. <laughs>